all the woes of being a flying horse. Number four, we recognize in the night sky by this standout V shape our eye kind of goes to, and that is the V for Taurus the Bull. For your bragging rights, letter D. One pleasant early afternoon, Europa, the daughter of King Phoenix, was plucking grass by the side of the river. Not taking a walk on the beach, but plucking grass by the side of the river. When a great snow-white bull appeared as if from nowhere and approached her. Astonished by the beauty of the bull, she forgot her caution and sat on the bull's back. Immediately the bull sprang, sprang towards the sea with tremendous power, and in an instant was galloping over the water as if it were land. The bull was actually Zeus, the king of the gods, in another form. Zeus carried off Europa across the Mediterranean Sea to the Grecian island of Crete, where he married her. Ever since that time, the land to which Europa was carried by the bull has been known by the name of Europe. A very typical rendering of Taurus. We have a side-by-side -side for you of the right there. Taurus the bull, that V-shape here. And another side-by-side -side representation from a star program. And off to the side of Taurus the bull, we have the Pleiades. This is a star cluster. And it's sometimes known as the Sages, the Sisters, depending on which cultural story you're going and reading. The Pleiades plays into a car manufacturer's logo. I'll let you run through a few of those. Not Chevy, that's the bow tie. Not Ford, that's the logo of Ford. Ah, yes, Subaru. Another rendering of Taurus the Bull. And Taurus the Bull is always up against the great warrior Orion in the night sky. Tell me more about these star patterns of yours. Basically, I see shapes in the stars. Like this one here I call Orion. He has a great hunter and easy to spot because of the belt at his waist. You could say his belt is a big waste of space. Get it? Waste? That's a terrible joke. I give it three stars. Please stop. This is Taurus the Bull and Orion. Taurus. Here's that typical V shape with the Pleiades off to the side. And H.A. Ray has just incorporated larger amount of the stars within the area of Taurus in the night sky. Item 5 on your dot to dot page. This is Gemini, the twins, or for bragging rights, letter F. The twins, Castor and Pollux, were the children of Zeus, the king of the gods, and Leda, the queen of Sparta. The two were devoted friends, extremely brave, and together achieved great fame from their exploits on the famous Argo expedition and many other adventures. The twins were always helping each other. In one battle, Castor was mortally wounded and died. In his grief, Pollux tried to take his own life. However, Pollux had inherited more of the blood of his father Zeus and was therefore immortal. Looking on as Pollux cried, Let me go to my brother Castor. Zeus took pity and raised both twins into the sky. Ever since, they have stood as a symbol of friendship. So we have the two main characters, Castor and Pollux. Castor and Pollux being the stars, often represent the heads. Where is Gemini? Yep, right there. More left, right, up, down. Right there, oriented heads to left, Castor and Pollux. The twins often seem to be depicting or depicted with one with a weapon and the other with a musical instrument. I'm not sure if that's if you play that song another time, I'm going to wound you, or please don't ever stop playing that song, it's my favorite. You decide. And H. A. Ray has not made too much of a difference from the classic flashcard rendering at all. Item six, halfway through. Cancer the Crab, we recognize by this upside down Y. You might think your eye gravitates to this near square, but really the Y is more stand out of the night sky for your puzzle challenge, letter C. Now the medical profession often borrows from astronomy, and the term cancer was of course borrowed from Greek mythology. When the medical professionals saw that there was this horrible strain of disease that uh, mutated cells, the cells that tended to have these uh, spindles, kind of crab-like legs, they found were the cancerous tumors, as they now are called, 
Typically, tumors that are smooth around the edges tend to be the benign ones with malignant with the spindling, so that's not a diagnostic method by any means, but cancer was incorporated from the Greek uh, mythos as crab-like. The crab was a friend of the sea monster Hydra. The tail of this crab appears in one of the twelve labors of Hercules, in which Hercules was to rid the world of the Hydra. As the many-headed Hydra grappled with Hercules, one after another of its fearsome heads was cut off until its situation became extremely perilous. I don't know about you, but when my first head is cut off, I find that an extremely perilous situation. Seeing the unconquerable, unconquerable Hydra in such desperate situation, the crab cried, My friend Hydra is in trouble, and bravely waved its claws at the mighty Hercules. Before the greatest of the Greek heroes, however, the crab had no chance and was vanquished in an instant. Looking on, the gods were impressed with this display of friendship and added the crab to the heavens. So the very classic upside down Y. Right there. Artist rendering. Sometimes maybe Cancer the lobster. Cancer the crab. And Ray's rendering of Cancer the crab. Seven, our eye in the night sky goes towards this backward question mark, typical of Leo the lion. For the bragging rights, letter B. Hercules, the hero of many Greek myths, was commanded by the angry King Eurydice to perform twelve perilous tasks known as the labors of Hercules. The lion represents the first of these dangerous feats. Hercules was ordered to get rid of the man-eating lion of the forest of Nemea. Taking his bow and arrow and sword, he attacked the lion that appeared before him. His foe, however, was a supernatural lion with an immortal body that could not be wounded by arrows or swords. Hercules wrapped his arms around the neck of the lion and squeezed with all of his tremendous strength. The supernatural lion was no match for the power of Hercules and was slain. The star pattern of the lion was named in the memory of this great feat of Hercules. Backwards question mark. Sometimes seen as a lion standing. Where's Leo? Right there, Leo, in a more seated position, certainly. Leo, 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 Leo minor and Leo major. Raise rendering, the backwards question mark. Item 8. This is Virgo for you, letter A. Demeter, the goddess of agriculture, governed the fruits of the earth and had an only child, a beautiful daughter named Supersmith, I mean Persephone. One day Persephone was picking flowers in the meadow, not plucking grass by the river, but picking flowers in the meadow, when suddenly the earth opened and Hades, the king of the underworld, appeared and carried her off in his black chariot. Demeter grieved for her beloved only daughter who had been taken away to the underworld, and so Demeter hid herself in a cave. Now that the goddess of the earth had hidden herself away, no more grains and flowers could grow, and the earth became barren as far as the eye could see. Zeus, the king of the gods, saw this and commanded Hades to return Persephone to Demeter. Hades agreed with great reluctance, but Persephone had already eaten part of the pomegranate while she was in captivity. Anyone who had tasted the food of the underworld was doomed to live there forever. So it was decided Persephone would live with her mother for half of the year and return to the underworld for the other half. This is how the seasons of the earth began to become explained by the Greeks. Quick note, pomegranate is becoming quite popular as an antioxidant, and your parental units of guardians might be giving you pomegranates. Please do not interpret this as they are trying to send you at hell, at to hell. This is not quite how it works these days. Virgo flashcard. Virgo. Virgo. Sometimes she has wings, sometimes not. Not sure about the mythos with that. Virgo's rendering. So you'll see the side-by-side -side classic version versus Ray's rendering, where just take the same area of the night sky and just reorganize how we address the lines and perceive something maybe looks more human in nature. Nine. So much easier than the one with three dots. We now have four. This is for Libra. And the scales of Libra letter L for bragging rights. Sometimes the great uh, astrophysicist NDT, Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson, likes to pipe in on social media. Not that anybody asked, but the LB for pound comes from the abbreviation of the star pattern Libra, 
the scales. Libra is said to be the scales with which Astria, the goddess of justice, determined good and evil. Long ago in the golden age of the world, the scales of the goddess Astria always tipped in the direction of justice. Humans and animals lived happily, and there was an eternal spring all the year. Can you imagine 365 and a quarter days of spring? Eventually the Silver Age arrived, an age in which the weak were oppressed by the strong. Gods and goddesses withdrew into heaven, their patience with humans exhausted. Astria, however, remained among men, continuing to expound justice. With the coming of the Copper Age, however, humans began to make war upon each other. The scales of Astria continually tipped towards evil, and the goddess could no longer bear the ways of men, and withdrew from the earth. We do have the modern interpretation of the scales of justice, labor, Lady Liberty being blindfolded. Originally, it was because uh, she could not bear the ways of men. She didn't want to look upon the evil doings. This has been morphed into the blindfold being to remove bias with justice. Scales? Where are they? Right there. Ah, oh, it's exactly right. Scales, scales, scales. Rays rendering not too different at all. Ten. We're in the double digits. Students will often come, and this might be one that sort of kind of looks like what we're after, and that is Scorpio, or Scorpion, or Scorpius. Letter J. I'm sure you're all 10 for 10. When I first started out, I'd definitely be 0 at 10 at this point. Those are my people at 0 at 10 right now. Orion the Mighty Hunter was always boasting of his marksmanship. Nothing in creation can stand up to me. The gods and goddesses were pained by such talk. One day Hera, the wife of the great Zeus, could no longer bear it. She released a scorpion on the forest path where Orion frequently walked as he boasted of his power. The scorpion stung Orion in the foot and its venom spread through his body. In spite of all his strength, Orion soon breathed his last. Ever since then, both Orion and the scorpion have remained in the sky as enemies. As the scorpion rises, Orion sinks below the horizon as if to flee in a never-ending celestial chase. Summertime for Northern Hemisphere, we see Scorpion. So the Orion star better would not be seen until winter in the Northern Hemisphere. This legend points out that it's a never-ending chase. Some other legends describe the fact you don't ever see two at the same time in the night skies to honor Orion, that he doesn't have to constantly see his mortal enemy. So as one rises, the other sets, and vice versa. The way I remember is S for Scorpio, S for summer in the Northern Hemisphere. Scorpio, right there, just coming up above the trees. Scorpio, 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 Scorpio. The Northern Scorpion, Canada's only scorpion, can have as many as 12 eyes, but they are mainly light sensitive and only able to distinguish light from dark. However, they are so sensitive they can actually navigate by the stars at night. The obesity epidemic is really spreading. Orion just added a notch to his belt. Penultimate item. Penultimate meaning next to last. The penultimate image. This is Sagittarius, the archer. Letter L. Or is that letter I? I think it's letter I for you. Sagittarius has the shape of the mythical centaur, a creature in Greek mythology who had the upper body of a man and the lower body of a horse. The race of centaurs are a rough and savage lot, except for one named Chiron, who was taught by Apollo and Artemis the arts of music, medicine, hunting, and prophecy, and went on to tutor the young heroes of Greece in many subjects. The wise Chiron was immortal, however. This proved to be ruinous. Wounded by a stray poison arrow shot by the hero Hercules, his suffering was so great that Prometheus granted release from immortality so he could die. The great Zeus was hurt by the death of Chiron and raised him to the skies. Now, back in the day when I first started teaching astronomy, I actually didn't have students use their notebooks as a reference on their celebrations of knowledge tests. And I did have a picture very similar to this, and a student uh, responded as T. Copulus. What was exceptional by the great response of Bambi Carr, and there she is, is I had not discussed with the class how more modern times were moving away from thinking of it as an archer to Sagittarius as the teapot and teaspoon, as you see here in this astronomy program software. 
So here is Sagittarius right there. And back to the traditional archer. And you gotta love that there's a star pattern in the night sky known as the telescope. Look at me, the centaur of attention. And Ray has removed the horse portion of the centaur legend and just made it an archer. Item 12, the last one, process elimination. We have Capricorn, letter H, the sea goat. I know, when you go to the zoo, you rush out into the main area on the map looking for the wonderful sea goat exhibit, your number one spot. Pan, the god of the forest, the same Pan, Shakespeare reference in A Midsummer's Night Dream, resembled a goat and was very skilled at playing the reed pipes. Pan spent his days singing, dancing, and living a cheerful existence. Next time someone passes you in the halls and they ask, how are you? Why not answer? I'm living a cheerful existence. Once the gods were feasting on the banks of the river Nile in the land of Egypt, Pan, who loved everything lively, set out joyfully playing his reed pipes merrily and loudly when suddenly burst the monster Tufan, all the way from back at beginning of the Zodiac stories. Bellowing, what is that terrible noise? Apparently Pan, not as great of reed player as he thought. Startled, Pan tried to quickly change himself into a fish to get away. In his haste, his body turned into a fish, but his head remained that of a goat. The gods laughed uproariously and added his form to the patterns in the night sky to commemorate the event. It's the Greek gods that set the path for YouTube. The night sky really is the original YouTube. The gods could look at their wonderful star pattern renderings and recall the time that they laughed uproariously at Pan with the monster Tufan bellowing. Capricorn. Yep, right there. Capricorn, Capricorn, Capricorn. And Ray rendering it more as a goat than a sea goat. The goal of page dot to dot is not to memorize the letters, but to have the notes that this is Aquarius, Pisces, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, and Capricorn. These are all the zodiac star patterns. If we were to take the images from your page of dot to dot and put them into a zodiac wheel, it would look similar to this. Throwing back to the idea that the zodiac means a circle of wheels, here's an Asian one that is certainly a circle of wheels. Here's a zodiac wheel from the African continent. A North American continent zodiac wheel. Back to all the fauna. Where the Celtic wheel you see here is an example of all flora. There was a writer who had submitted the first portion of their book to an editor. The editor had a question uh, for the author in having read the drafts and asked if the wood choice that they had made for the made up fictional date of birth for the fictional characters had corresponded on purpose to the Celtic wheel. And J.K. Rowling, author of the Harry Potter series, said no, she had not intended to match the wand's wood choice for her main character's date of birth, but then decided to follow that pattern throughout her series.